I often get asked if I prefer to use tube paint or pan paint when I paint in watercolour. I like to use tube paints because I find it easier to mix with them and I'm able to adjust the consistency of the paint mixture more easily. And the consistency of the paint that you use is really important when you paint in watercolour. In this video, I'm going to show you how I changed the consistency of my paint mixtures when I painted this tiger in watercolour. If you're new here, I post watercolour tutorials like this one every week. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of them. Now it's important to understand how to use different paint consistencies when you're painting watercolour. If you tend to use the same liquid consistency all through your painting, it might end up looking a bit flat because your tonal variations won't be great enough. I tend to paint on wet paper more often than not and I differ the consistency of the paint that I mix in order to achieve the different techniques that I like to use. This tiger painting is a good painting for me to demonstrate two different paint consistencies. With this painting, I used thinned transparent paint for the initial wash of orange and for the white areas of fur. But for the stripes, I used really thick creamy paint that stuck to my paper like glue. The thick paint on the stripes enhanced the transparency of the orange areas and it added some energy to my painting. I used it right at the end when I was painting the stripes on the tiger. When I painted the orange fur, my paint mixture had a bit of strength to it. It wasn't a weak, watery mixture that left behind pale colour. I wanted a transparent layer of colour all over the tiger, but I didn't want to have to paint another layer over the top of that to get the tonal value that I was looking for. I used a big brush and I got the paint on there as quickly as I could. When I mixed the black paint for the stripes, it was thick and creamy straight out of the tube. The only water that was in it when I used it on my painting was the little bit of water that I had in my brush when I loaded it with the paint. So you'll get to see me do all of that in this video. I'm not going to show you the entire painting. If you want to see all of it from start to finish, you'll need to join me on Patreon where I have over 150 watercolour tutorials that you can work your way through from beginner to advanced. The tiger tutorial is coming, it's not on there just yet. I used only four Winsor & Newton colours to paint the tiger. Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine, Transparent Yellow and a tiny bit of Cobalt Turquoise Light. The paper I used was Arsh Coal Press watercolour paper. I wasn't sure what colour I was going to use for the orange fur. I knew that I wanted to use Burnt Sienna because I was going to use it to mix my grey but I knew that it wouldn't be orange enough for the fur so what I did was I mixed some transparent yellow into it to see if that would work. I got a piece of scrap paper and tried the colour out and I thought that looked okay. I was happy with that colour, so to make sure I didn't run out of the paint before I finished painting it on, I got one of my little dish palettes and I squirted some fresh paint onto it. That was burnt sienna, this is transparent yellow. I put a bit more of the burnt sienna. Then with a bit of water on my brush, I mixed them together. I needed it to be a little bit more watery than that, so I squirted some water into it. I wanted to work on wet paper, so I got my big flat brush and I started to wet the fur. So I'm wetting the area where the orange fur is. I wanted soft edges along the top of the tiger there, so I've wet the background area as well. And then when I put the paint on, the paint will flow over the water and it'll give me a soft fuzzy edge along the top. 
Then when all that area is completely wet, I pick up my paint that I mixed and I start to paint that onto the wet paper. You saw how much pigment that I used when I mixed this paint. I wanted it to move on the paper and run freely, but I wanted it to also give me a strong colour that I wouldn't have to paint another layer over to darken it. Along the front here, I used another brush, slightly damp with water, to run it along the edge to soften it. That's where some white fur is, and I didn't want a hard edge along there where it touches the white fur. And then I kept going with the orange mixture until I had the body of the tiger covered. For variation, I picked up a bit of burnt sienna on my brush. And because the orange is still wet, I'm able to work that colour through there. If it was starting to dry, I'd need to wait until it was completely dry. Then I'd have to re-wet that layer with water and then put this colour on. Because I put plenty of water on the paper to begin with, I'm able to keep working. I painted on the fur on top of the head. I had to be a bit more careful here because I had to make sure I left the white of the paper showing in the white areas of the tiger. In that section I just painted, I was working on dry paper, but here I'm wetting the paper along that very faint pencil line. So when I take the orange mixture down to that area, it hits the water and it gives me a soft edge where the orange fur meets the white fur. Before that paint dries, I drop some burnt sienna in there. You can see I've switched to a smaller brush here as well so that I've got a bit more control of where the paint goes. I carry that orange down the front of the head. Here I'm working on dry paper. And again I've hit the water or the wet area and it's giving me that soft edge along there. So where I want a soft edge where the orange meets the white, I wet the paper. But where it doesn't matter, like where I am now, I can paint on the dry paper. The burnt sienna that I painted behind the eye looks a bit wishy-washy there, so I've just dropped a bit more pigment on there. I allow it to bleed over the wet paint. So you can see all the way along this bottom edge, because I've wet the paper, I've got that soft edge there where it reaches the white fur. I gave the orange fur time to dry, and now I'm going to work on the white fur. Again, I want to work on wet paper, so I wet the paper where the white fur will sit. You can actually see the water on the paper there. I'm using quite a bit, but I spread it out so that it's not lying in puddles anywhere. I also need to take the water onto the orange fur. I don't want a hard edge forming where the white fur meets the orange fur. So if I take a bit of water into the orange fur, that will prevent that from happening. I needed a grey, so I mixed some French ultramarine with some burnt sienna. I used a fair amount of pigment, but I watered it down so that it would flow. I wanted it to move over the paper when I put it on there, but I wanted a decent colour. I didn't want it to be too pale. I also wanted a cool grey, so I mixed more of the French ultramarine into the mixture. And then I painted that onto the wet paper. I had to leave some of the white of the paper showing. I wasn't going to completely cover it with this colour. Just painted this on the areas that I saw were a little bit darker on the reference photo that I had. I used my number 8 round brush. It's a fairly large brush. I didn't want to use a little small brush here because I wanted to get the paint on there quickly and I didn't want to fuss with it. Here I wanted a bit of movement in the fur, so I painted some longer strokes. But everywhere else I put the paint on and I let it drift with the water that's on the paper. And because I mixed my grey, you can see a bit of the paint colours separating there, which adds interest to the painting. 
I ended up with a waterline forming in the orange fur just here. I got my damp brush and I tried to smooth it away, but that took a little bit of paint off. I didn't worry about it though because I thought this is a furry animal that can have a bit of texture. I could have left it like that, but just for interest, I got a bit of cobalt turquoise light and I dropped that into that area there. For the black stripes, I mixed French Ultramarine with Burnt Sienna. This is my black palette that I use whenever I paint something black. I like to use freshly squeezed paint when I mix black because I can use a brush that's only slightly damp to mix the two colours together. That means that the paint won't be diluted and it will be extra dark, which is what I want. I ended up squirting out a bit more of those two colours and I made a bigger patch of black paint for myself. I prefer to mix black whenever I can because I find that it's got more life in it than a pre-mixed black. Here I'm squishing the excess paint out of my brush so I don't waste it. I painted in the eye and the area around the eye and now I'll start to paint in some of these stripes above. To do that I work on wet paper. I've got some clean water. I use my number three brush to paint it on. And then I get my zero brush. It's wet with water and I roll it in the creamy paint. And then I start to paint that on where the stripe sits on the wet paper. Normally if I put thinner paint on this wet paper it will spread a fair way. But because this paint is quite a bit thicker, it tends to sit where I put it. Because the paper is wet, I get those soft edges around the outside of the mark that I'm making. So when I pick the paint up, I need to make sure that my brush is wet enough to pick the paint up, but not too wet that it dilutes the paint too much. So I keep painting where I've wet the paper. virtually pure pigment that I'm using on the wet paper. I'm using this little brush so that I don't put too much paint on there and I only wet a small section at a time with water because it will dry before I get to paint on it if I wet a larger area. And then I keep going. Nice thick pigment on wet paper. I can't get it any stronger or darker than what I've got it at the moment. I'm painting flat on the table, but if I was to hold this up vertically, the paint would sit in that spot. It wouldn't move or drip down the paper. I'll wet this next section and paint those few stripes in there. And again, I roll my brush in the thick creamy pigment and I make sure my brush isn't too wet when I pick it up. And you'll know straight away if your brush is too wet when you pick the pigment up because the paint will spread too far on the paper. I'll show you that in a minute. I want this paint dark enough so that I don't have to come back and give it another layer. You can see how the paint is spreading gently there, giving me those fuzzy edges, which helps to make it look like fur. I don't really have to do anything at all. The paint and the paper in the water is doing their job for me. This is one of the joys I find of painting in watercolour. I find that it's less labour intensive than some of the other mediums. Here I'll show you what happens when the paint is too thin. I've just wet that area with some water. Now when I picked up that thick creamy paint, this time my brush had too much water on it. And you can see that it spread too far, went out of control and it was too pale. So when I paint like this, I need to make sure that my brush isn't too wet when I pick the paint up.
here I've taken a bit of moisture out of my brush but it's still probably got a bit too much in it. You can see how the paint has been diluted there. It's nowhere near as dark as it was on those other stripes. When I'm using this thick dark pigment I have to mix it up often so I have to come back and mix up some more. So I go through a fair amount of paint when I'm painting like this. Here I've just mixed up a bit more pigment and I'm putting that on there. It's still spreading, but it's not spreading out of control. You can actually see that thick dark pigment on the brush itself. So I just kept painting like that section by section with the thick black pigment. Sometimes I might pick up the paint in an area where it wasn't mixed really well, like I have here. You can see burnt sienna showing there. But that's okay, that adds interest to my painting. So that stripe there too looked a bit browner than the other stripes. That's all right, it doesn't bother me at all. And that's basically all I did. It was quite quick. Once I had that initial wash painted in, then I re-wet section by section and I used the thick black paint onto the wet paper. Sometimes it will spread a bit further than what I anticipated, but that's all right. I just let it do what it wants to do. For the whiskers, I used a bit of Winsor & Newton's white gouache. Now I have to thin this down a little bit with water, otherwise it won't come off the brush. But I don't like to make it too thin because it will be too transparent. I load up the brush and I dab off the excess onto a tissue. I want a fine line, so I don't want too much paint on the brush, otherwise I'll get a thick line. Hold the brush perpendicular to the paper and then I paint in some longer strokes trying to get a bit of movement so I don't want to make them too stiff and I kept overlapping them until I was happy with it. And there is the finished painting. It's really important to learn to vary the consistency of your paint mixtures when you paint. But keep the thick, dark consistencies for the end of the painting though, when you're adding all the last minute details. This wasn't a very difficult painting, so if you'd like to try it out, as I said, the full length tutorial will be going on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. <coughs> 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 There's a blooper. I tend to paint on <clears throat> losing my voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> this tiger painting is a good painting. <clears throat> Doing it again. <clears throat> and for the wild. <clears throat> I don't like that. What are I doing wrong now? I haven't put the tiger to. It's fun. Fun. <clears throat> fun, isn't it? Where's the, jug? <laughs> the what? Where's the jug? I've got water here. It's behind you in the box. Drink some water. <laughs> I've got some here. I'll just have a sip. <laughs>